back on Corin's world. This is this is uncharted territories for me recently, as you guys all know. Kyle and Corin's back in the building, and it's gotten some some good love. I appreciate everybody. One guy sent me a hundred dollars, so shout out to that dude. I felt kind of <laughs> like I felt kind of bad like taking like the Venmo, but like he like insisted, and I wasn't gonna like reject it. But it was it was really nice. So he sent me a, a DM like a while a while ago and was like hey man like need the podcast back um i'll send you a hundred dollars or something like that if you get it up in the next two months or something i was like hey man don't worry about it at all i don't know what's up with the podcast (laughs) and then like randomly kyle was like yo i have a dude like editing my stuff now so we could get back to the pod and i was like that's what's up so then we put it up and then the kid or i put up the picture on twitter and the kid dm me and was like, yo, you you got it up. Like, I'm going to send you $100. <laughs> I was like, yo, don't worry about it, man. Uh, and he sent it. And, like, I was like, Molly, I'm going to just send this back. And she was like, what? I mean, like, people do that. Like, people have Patreons. People, like, support other people. Like, so thanks to that dude. I have his name somewhere. But people really rock with the podcast being back. So I figured that's back. We'll get this rolling again. You you left me hanging because you went on a DR trip, so I was kind of mad because, you know, like, you got to make it work if if, if it's rocking. No, I'm just joking. But Adrian went yeah. out of his way to to make the graphic of me and you in the beginning of for this. He's so, amazing. Yeah, he's awesome. So we, we, we're going to rock. We're bringing it back. But shout out to all the people that showed love on Kyle and Corin because it's kind of like – it's kind of crazy. Even when people, like, say something about you when I mention you, it's, kinda, it's like it, – it makes you feel good and warm, but then also like, you're like, I don't know you, but that's what's up that I'm helping you. Yeah. It's in a corny way. It's like, it connects people that would normally never be connected. And yeah, you're right. It's kind of cool that there is like a supportive aspect to it. Yeah. But at the same time, when people start shitting on you, you're just kind of like, Oh, I don't fucking know you. (laughs) They were like, but I was surprised because like people in the past that didn't know about the podcast was shit on me because they'd be like, who's this dummy? And it's kind of a good flow that Kyle is very smart and he like educates you on all like this, sh- like it's kind of cute type of thing. But now people kind of get the gist of like how, uh, how we flow yeah. and like our relationship and stuff like that. So like, and people, and people only know you and Kyle in that one aspect of your lives. Yeah, they don't exactly. know how much you know about sports and basketball and all those other things that Kyle may not like I mean, yeah. Kyle knows everything about golf, but, and obviously politics and all that stuff. But that doesn't necessarily mean he knows everything about everything. Yeah. So that's why when you come in, you're asking about things that have to do with, you know, politics and all, and all these people who are into that stuff who follow Kyle are like this idiot, but it's good because like Kyle needs to explain that stuff to people like you and me that don't necessarily tune into the, the political aspects of everything 24 seven. Yeah. It's kind of cool. I love that. Kyle's my friend. It's kind of cool. And like, I feel like Joe Rogan does this too. It's kind of like, you have your certain friends who are kind of experts in every area, you know? So it's like, it's fun to have that Avenue to Kyle where I could kind of ask him something political because there's like, there's so much happening that like one, I can't keep up with everything. And like, I I don't even know where to begin to like look for stuff. So I don't know. Do you feel like you have certain friends that you could go to for like a jujitsu question? I mean, like you're super well-rounded on everything. It's kind of nice. And we spoke about this yesterday when we recorded is like, everyone's kind of has like their own intelligence in their own little lane. So like you might be like, Oh, corn's a dummy. But to your point, I'm th- hit me with some sports shit and it's over, you know? Yeah. Well, no, I think I definitely have my, my go-tos and it tends to be the same people because as you get older and you have certain responsibilities, yeah. like with the house, I never, we, you and I and Davina, like our sister, we never lived in a house ever in our lives. Yeah. So, now I own a house and if some shit breaks and, and YouTube can't help me, then I have to call my buddy who like builds houses. Yeah. And he's a lifesaver. Well, it's my, kind my of buddy. fascinated the like pre YouTube, like you're, you're good. Our stepbrother Rob like impressed me one time. He bought like this crazy big TV and then like something just stopped working on it. So he was like, yeah, I just took it off the wall, like unscrewed the back and kind of just figured out what went, went, what went wrong. I won. One, before YouTube, I don't know how anybody became, like, a specialist in any type of electronic shit. That's why when you watch, like, 
these like daytime or like these nighttime scam shows and it's like some old lady in her house watching TV and they'll like they'll put the volume down to zero and she'll be like my TV's broken and the guy's like some Italian dude from Long Island is just like oh sweetie we'll get you right we'll get you good here in a second and then like <laughs> he'll spend two hours fixing something on the back of her TV and then like literally you know they'll be like hey sir you know like this was all a scam I'm John from Channel 7 so like I, like, did people just read the manuals OD before there was YouTube to, like, fix and learn and how to do – or, like, how – I think you've yeah. got to be, like, wired, no pun intended, to, like, have that, like, go-getter thing to figure out how to fix things, whereas I I'm just, so. like, I'll pay somebody to fix it. But it's also – so you have to be put into a situation that you're forced to do it because, like, if I don't want to spend $200 to get some, like, guy to come to my house to, like – plug in some shit that i could have just figured out on my own yeah like when you, when you got when you told me that your your washing machine was broken and molly just like pulled out a diaper from like a clogged filter or some some bullshit like oh that's all she had to do but she would have called somebody they would have come out you would have paid 150 dollars for that person just to step into your house yeah but i spoke about this with kyle yesterday again and i was like shout out to ikea because like they they sell stuff for like eight nine bucks it takes mad long to put it together. And he was yeah, like, no, some, I, I'll just pay I, someone to put that together. Yeah, I could never do that, though. If it's anywhere within my possibility, then I'm doing it. I put together this IKEA shit yesterday. Oh, my God. I wanted to fucking just put, let it feel drop good on at my the head. end. Yeah, you do. Because you do like, I put, like you didn't build a house, but you definitely had to follow some fucking instructions yeah but then it makes you think like how like so i asked this question to molly because like we have to do windows now like she won't let me open up the window because she thinks it's moldy and i really want the window open in our bedroom (laughs) and i was like where do you draw the line because you'll do some washing machine shit and like take it apart and pull out all these clogged things but like why don't you just why don't you just redo the windows while you're at it too i feel like most people's limits are safety are yeah but like safety could be that's like a broad that's you, that could be a lot of different things i think it's plumbing and electrical where people start to say nah i'm not messing with that yeah although i didn't do all the electrical in my house like when i moved in i changed every single outlet i i did all those things just off of youtube and the house hasn't burned down yet i'm gonna knock on wood because <laughs> this shit's probably gonna like burn down tonight yeah but anyone who has a house shout out to you guys because there's so much stuff that like you're kind of like have just a gloss over your eyes when you're looking at the house before you buy it. And then like the first second you move into that shit, yeah, it's like, it's yours. yeah, it's yours. But like they, they must like hit a switch when they leave and like then the garage doesn't work. And then like the <laughs> flex, the, you know what I was thinking about yesterday? Do you remember at our apartment when we were growing up? One, they like regulated the heat. So like it would be hot as hell. Yeah. So we'd always have the window open and it'd be cold as shit and it'd be like matching the heater. But then there was also like, I don't know if we had it in the apartment or just like around in schools back in the day, but they had that big like furnace looking thing that would just get hot as hell. And there was never like a barrier around or anything like that. I don't know if that was for heat or what not. Yeah. It's like uh, when you have steam heat or yeah, it's like. I don't know what made me think about it, but I just remember how furnace, unsafe but, it was yeah. now that I have kids that that th- it was, was in, a thing. It was, in, it was definitely in school. It was in like school our elementary it. school. It was just like a big metal heater yeah. thing. It was just like burning hot. And I feel like you could just run into it and die. Yeah. Well, okay. So now that I have a house, I have a lot more respect for one, people who just know how to do things like you. You you fall into that category because I, I'm not – Molly falls into that category, so shout out for that. But, but you, could be, you could be if you wanted to because here's the thing. Let's say you had no money to pay anybody and you were just like, shit, I have to do this. I make the same analogy with Spanish. When I'm teaching Spanish, yeah. and kids are like, I'll just never learn it. I'm like, because you didn't put yourself in a situation where you have to learn it. Like you, you have, If you are in Dominican Republic and you need to get somewhere or you need to take a shit and you're like, I am in a lot of trouble right now. You'll find every single word that you have to find to make that happen. Yeah, I still think that I would like just succumb to the situation and be like, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I've done that when we're in different countries, but like, I just, I don't have the, I don't know what it is 
where yeah it's it's i don't know i don't i don't have that that drive but i wanted to ask you because we spoke about this yesterday and i feel like you'd probably do pretty well on this kyle's got that map that sits behind him how yeah. confident do you feel that you can fill out i don't know how many countries and all that stuff is you feel pretty good that you can you can I would, I would do i think i would do really well um africa i would yeah i would get, I would get a little shaky there um south america you could knock out every every country right everything yeah. central america south america the caribbean i'd be decent mm-hmm. but a lot of those little islands as you get down to grenada at yeah. the end of the train that, that gets tough um where else asia I would be good, except for like some of the islands where you've got, like in the South Pacific, I get a little funky over there. Mm-hmm. But um, where else? Where else? I, Eastern Europe, I'd be good. Yeah, like I, I was thinking good. about Europe and just like before this whole Ukraine stuff went down, and like nobody knew like the capital, like the capital of Ukraine, and like or people probably didn't even know that like Belarus was a place. Yeah. But now, like, everybody's an expert on it just because of everything happening. Yeah, of course. And that's um, – but- yeah, I don't think I could do pretty well. But, like, I know the states I'd probably be okay just because I would think – You've like, you've driven through the entire country. So yeah. that makes a huge difference because you're always like, oh, I went west from Colorado and then I got to Utah. I'm kind of fascinated because I was talking to someone who was in – where's Mount Rushmore? Is that South Dakota? It's one of the Dakotas. It's yeah. one of the Dakotas, wherever Sioux Ox Falls is, or Sioux Falls. Sioux, Sioux Falls. <laughs> well, there's an X in that shit, which it shouldn't be. Um, I was like, you know what's crazy is I'll never step foot in any of the Dakotas in my whole life. Yeah. And there's, there's some states like that and probably Iowa, probably Nebraska, that I just will never go to in my but whole life. You know what's like, funny? But the more I travel to other countries, the more people say to me, like, so when I go to Dominican Republic, people mm-hmm. there are like, oh, you know my country better than I do. And I'm like, well, that's because I'm not from here. I'm curious. I want to go to all the different places. I want to go to all the different towns. You live here. You're like, ah, oh, I know that's there. It's like when people live in New York and haven't ever been to the Statue of Liberty or they haven't ever been to Ellis Island. They haven't ever been to Empire State Building. It's right there. Yeah, and but, are like, but North Dakota there? and all those Dakotas are not right there. That's why, like, I'd have I'm, more. I'm saying more, more on a on a grand scheme of things. Like, people might say you you live in the United States, like you could travel there on a domestic flight. Oh yeah, you don't someone need like said to me like, "Hey, you should go there," but like, I I feel like I don't. I'd have more reason to go there because I don't live there. Like, it's like if I live in the suburbs of Chicago and someone's like, "Have you been to the Sears Tower?" It's like, no, I don't go there because it's like I, I don't work by there. I don't do anything around there. Well, what I'm saying is that you're more likely to explore places that you aren't in. And so I'm just making it a little bit more broad. Mm-hmm. We live in the United States, so we may not travel throughout the United States as much as we would want to say, let's go to Europe. Yeah. People in the United States are like, I want to go to Italy. Okay, why don't you go to North Dakota? Like, that's a place <laughs> you've never been. I'm saying, I know it's different. There's more shit in Italy than there is in North Co- Dakota to see. But at the same time, like, if you're going to travel, like, why not just travel all of the United States? You yeah, do no. that shit. It's huge. I don't know. That's my, my, my thing is sometimes. So you think you before you die, you'll be in North Dakota or South Dakota or Iowa and Nebraska? Probably not. <laughs> That's what's crazy to me is like I'm thinking about my lifespan. and I'm like I, I could like there's. But someone, from, but someone from DR or someone from Spain might say, you know what I want to do? Like the man comes in New York and then just be like, you know what? Let's just. Let's book a trip to like North Dakota or South Dakota. Let's go see Mount Rushmore. Let's go do this. Let's go do that. Because they have more incentive to think like I don't live in that country. I want to go explore all the different shit that's there. Yeah, I guess so. I just I don't know. I just I know a kid who lives in Nebraska and I I see the stuff that like he posts and I'm just like I don't know how anyone outside of Nebraska would ever want to go to Nebraska. And same thing Shout when that kid to told Nebraska listeners if there's Nebraska listeners, like, let me know. Like, even Sofa King's in West Virginia, and we're talking about, like, people that show love. Like, Sofa King always shows love. But, like, Sofa King, do you ever leave West Virginia? Like, would you go to Nebraska? So, I don't know. I just – West Virginia is another one that, like, 
they have a university. I guess if you go to like Nebraska, like a college game or something, yeah. then and then I think Omaha, Omaha is pro- probably a really cool city. Like if you went to downtown Omaha, you probably um, you know, yeah, you Omaha's know, cool. They have the like South, World Series South of baseball. Capital. Yeah, but you know what I mean. Yeah, what is it, Lincoln, Lincoln Nebraska, right? Uh yeah, I think so. Is that and right? Nebraska has probably really good corn. Like I'd be interested to try their corn in Nebraska and Iowa. I know someone from Iowa. At the end of the day, it's like every every like we went to Kansas City, remember? Yeah. And people can say the same shit about Kansas City. Like, why would you want to go to Kansas City? Like, that's what was there. And we went to all these great barbecue spots, spots. downtown. Great barbecue spots. Those nice little coffee shops. We yeah. walked downtown. Beautiful out. We went to those like different parks, and I don't know. It was just like really nice to go to a different city. So you, like, I would say that if you went, I would definitely never go in the winter. Yeah. But if I went to some of these places in the summer, that'd probably be amazing. Yeah. That's well, I wanted to bring up when we were talking before. And this is what I wanted to say, and I forgot the, about just some of the comments that I saw. Yeah. Um, just when you, you were talking about you and Kyle in the podcast, and it was like a kid that wrote. I don't know if it's a kid. It might be a guy. I don't know. Probably, it was just like, it's probably, um, yeah, it's probably a guy. Yeah, I have no idea. And he was just like, "You guys are the only people that used to keep me company at lunch." Oh, did you? See, I don't know if you saw that or not. No, but, I didn't see was, that. But um, a couple other people chimed in. They were like, "Yeah, like I would be working crazy shifts at my job, and the only thing that would like get me through the the shift was that I would take a break and listen to Kyle and Corn." See, that's and I was like, damn, that's like that's so. Those are the types of things I wanted to tell you because I was thinking to myself. You guys are just friends that are talking, and that's awesome. But sometimes just – especially for that kid that um, posted about – he's like, I didn't have any friends for like a year and a half at school, so I would just listen to Kyle and Corn. Damn. And I was like, wow. Now, I mean, that that was awesome. I, I yeah. was like, damn. Like we were talking about the community of it, you know, and – I mean, and, But like everyone's mad cool. Like when I went to Politicom with Kyle, everyone was just down to earth, and that's why like I'm – like – like I'm not even trying to get ahead of anything, but like where I'm at when I do that podcast with Kyle and I met someone at um, Paradise Pup who was like a fan of the podcast. Like that was dope. He was super cool. But I'm always fascinated when there's like a celebrity who's an A-list celebrity and maybe they've been doing it for a while and like they're like fame is on some next level shit that would like blow off a fan, like a fan or just not show love or like how they could just so – like nonchalantly just walk past a whole crowd of people and like not even show some love. Like I feel like, and maybe I say this, but like it would never get to a point where if there was someone standing in some shit for me that I would just be like, Oh, I'm going to just walk into where I need to get to regardless of if I'm going to be late or like, it's just like people are showing you love. So for you to just be like, fuck you guys. It's just so, like we have this one famous story, and who knows if it's even true. But our dad said he met Al Roker at like a airport one time, and he yeah, was just like, "Yeah," but like he was like, "My dad was like, hey, big fan or something like that." They didn't have pictures back then, but was probably just trying to show love. And you know, Al was reading the newspaper and was like, "Can't you see I'm reading the paper?" And like that could, was his experience. Yeah, I with, could totally see him saying that. Yeah, so. every time, like that. Yeah, hey everybody, ooh, and it's like. Fuck you! You're probably a piece of shit. Yeah, and, and at the kids. Yeah, I agree. And but especially that if you was, did that. To dad. <laughs> that was our dad's experience. That goes on. Like, and everyone has that story of meeting someone who was super nice, super mean. Like, so regardless of whatever situation I'm in, I still like you. Like, there's just a human element of like, damn, these people are waiting here. You got to show some love. Yeah, it's tough though. Like, I I can't even. Um... You blame some of them when they get to the point where like you can't even walk like five steps without people like you can't imagine you just wanted to like go somewhere real quick yeah and every time you go somewhere it's like a three hour ordeal because everybody and their grandmother stops you for a picture and, and you say oh no i just i can't right now then that person's i forgot who i was listening to some celebrity saying how it might have been Norm McDonald. I think it was Norm McDonald, and he was talking about how people judge you off of that one experience. So yeah, look at Al Roker. He could, I mean, like Loki, he could he be said, a super nice guy, but he was a dick to our be. dad. He's a dick. But you know, Norm McDonald always was having those moments of brilliance where he was saying he would, in the midst of his comedy, he would say something that was like genius, mm-hmm. and he was saying 
how I don't know he like locked eyes with someone in in a airport and he looked away, but that that person said something like this guy's a piece of shit. Like oh damn, you know. But he's like I didn't know what to do. I yeah. made eye contact. It was awkward. I yeah. looked away. You know, but for you, it's that one. <laughs> For us, like regular people, it's that one moment that defines so much of that person. And that person is just walking through the airport and has seen three million people in the past three days. Yeah. Speaking of um, famous people or just a transition, because I was like watching TV before and I was thinking to myself, what are the movies that I would always stop on and oh, yeah. always watch? Mm -hmm. And I was just thinking about some of like some of the classics mm -hmm. and for some reason heavyweights kept coming to mind yeah but that's like a, never like on a, tv it's never on tv but it's just a sleeper movie that because like, nowadays i'll just look for a movie yeah on one of like disney plus or something like that and i feel like heavyweights is a real sleeper movie that oh. if you know about it you could watch it over and over again yeah but you know what's crazy i bet you if you were to like everyone listening to this i bet you maybe seven of the people have seen heavyweights heavyweights is oh, like it's not it's such a good movie yeah either I, Stiller is great in it. Stiller is phenomenal, but they need to either like the precursor of his dodgeball character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's a classic, but yeah, I don't think anyone's seen that. But they go to like their standard movies on TV, and I don't know. Like, I'm not. I'll never really find a new movie because I'm. I just stick to the old ones that I like. You know, there's probably so many other good movies out there that like the you you could. There's that old like just um. Like people always say, like you could scroll through the whole Netflix like thing and never find a new movie. But the whole uh, TV movie ones that always get me are like Con Air. Yeah, like, Con Air is kind of like I've kind of like lost. It's like uh, mad for it, me. Uh, I was just like, I gotta watch it. Um, what else? What else? Any like Adam Sandler classics like Big Daddy? Yeah, but they've been going to uh, Grown Ups a lot on like uh, yeah, Netflix TV. Watch I watch Grown Ups. Grown Ups is a classic. They do uh, old schools all the time on like oh, TNT, TBS. I watch that all the time. Wedding, Wedding Crashing. Crash. Yeah. Step Brothers that. is another one of those ones that's like low key, like didn't really pop in the movie theater, I don't really? think. I thought, I think Step Brothers was, was like the shit. For oh, no, no, no. It was a banger, but like I don't remember it. I mean, like Even like popularity. Oh, like even in the. I think so. Yeah. Me? No, it's the. Uh, Spoiler. Oh, that shit sounds like someone's back. Like Osama bin Laden's dungeon right yeah, now. Yeah, you do look like you're a dungeon. Um, which is weird because when they do those videos, like they must have some Wi-Fi to like send that video out. So how do they not pick up the location of wherever they're at? I don't know. Someone's got to be using some type of telephone or computer to like upload the video to wherever they need to upload it. No, I think they used to send the fucking videos. Like I think they used to send a straight up like videotape. No, because they're recording on no, like they would just put like wherever that video is getting dispersed. They had to have gone to like a post office in the middle I of the desert, like, like when they're doing like these crazy like beheadings and stuff like that. They must have to then. Send that video like someone's got to text their boy like yo here's the video. Yeah, they probably had to connect. But the can like they have to be able to dig back to wherever that video got sent from. That's why it's like <laughs> location unknown. Where it's like, well, how do you not know where Osama bin Laden is if he's like putting out this video that's now on CNN? But I feel like back then it was because uh, we're talking like 2001. That's it wasn't like Wi-Fi was really anywhere yet. I mean, not, not like that. I think they were doing regular recordings, and they would send it. Always, there's always Al Jazeera, Al Jazeera, yeah. net, like news network. Yeah, yeah. There yeah. were ones that had it because it was always had like the Al Jazeera watermark. Yeah. In the corner of those videos, so I feel like there was just like they would just like show up at the doorstep one day. <laughs> but there has to be a mailman in that in that equation. There's got to be one random dude that's like, oh, okay. I got to that. Like, how would you know who sent it if I if I gave you a tape and said go drop this off at a mailbox, and then you dropped it off at like some random person from the village went and dropped it off at a mailbox, or I don't know what the fuck they would do, <laughs> but they would and then it would just drop it in the mailbox and it would show up at Al Jazeera's door and they'd be like, oh, another Sam Bin Laden bang. I guess so. I'm always fascinated that anything gets through the mail system because like there's just there was a video when 
someone was running for office and they showed like a mail room in like Miami or some shit and there was just mad boxes and letters and shit just piled up and they were like trying to say that like these were votes in there that weren't getting counted and I was like nobody's getting their mail out of that shit and then like if you don't get your mail there's not like there's nothing you could really do yeah it's just lost forever it's just lost forever yeah I guess unless you have a tracking on it but even I've had tracking on stuff before and it's just like in in the uh like mail place it just sits there like customer so, service, you feel like you're doing something when you call customer service for tracking for UPS, but all they're doing is reading the shit that you look at online. So they're not explaining to you anything different than you see, yeah. and then you hang up the phone after two hours and you're like, I didn't accomplish anything. That's the same shit that's happening with um, airlines recently too. Is like I see people calling, spending mad, t- or like they just cancel flights now. Luckily, knock on wood, it hasn't happened to me, but like. There's it. I say this about like the NBA and all sports. It's just like there's no one to complain about. Like you can't. There's nothing that can be done. They cancel your flight and it's a wrap. Like you you have to wait on hold for mad long. Then they don't help you. Maybe you get your money back, but it's kind of like kind of sucks that like there's so many people that need jobs, but they still are canceling flights. Pilots are like going on strike, and the whole airline industry yeah. is just like that. Shit's kind of like a, just a mess right now. Yeah, it's just like the bureaucracy of everything because you have like some CEO that's in a crazy office making millions and millions of dollars. And then from that point to the where the consumer where the, where the customer is, there's so much bullshit that exists along the way up to that guy. And then when you get on like the Delta flight, it's like, "Hi. I'm Ed Burke." Yeah. I'm so happy that you're flying with us. We know you have many choices when it comes to flying. It's like, no, no, I don't. Yep. You were the cheapest flight. Like, I'm not like, I love Delta. I won't fly anything else. Like, yep. I'm just like, this was the flight that was the cheapest to get to Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. And like, it, the, the situation doesn't like, it wouldn't seem like it would get better because there was piloted, pilots striking or like picketing or some shit saying that they were tired. And they're like the last person you want to be tired is to pilot on your damn plane, which being a pilot's not some easy shit too. It's not like they could just hire like a no like slew of pilots. Once they start retiring, and every pilot I've ever seen is just an old ass dude. No, I see some like young like hot dudes. <laughs> <laughs> they're pretty good looking guys. There are like, some sometimes I see them and pilots. I'm just like, damn, you you're probably like living in a good life right now. Yeah, but. I don't know. I can't picture like pilots probably have awesome Instagram pages, but like I don't see that as like a glamorous like job. But and it just takes mad long to become a pilot. I feel like and the people who become pilots, well, I think a lot of them, not a lot, maybe some of them are people who may might have been military and then they're just kind of like not in the military anymore. Oh, I because like I have a couple of friends that um were in the air force. No, they were marines. But oh, and then became pilots? pilots? Yeah. Oh. So commercial pilots. You in the Marines? They were, yeah, they flew Black Hawk helicopters. Oh, I thought everyone who flew a plane was just in the Air Force. <laughs> no, I mean, that was, although the Marines are technically a division of the Navy, so maybe that's like a Navy job. I don't know. But whatever it is, um, they, uh, right, wasn't like Top Gun, wasn't he a Navy pilot? Was he a pilot? Was he, I know he was a pilot, but was he in the was he in the services? It, in the services? Well, what is that what, is that what you say? Like he just stole a? No, I didn't know. Like he might have just been like a pilot. Like he might have just done that shit on his free time and was just super cool. I didn't know he was like in something. I didn't yeah. know he was like maybe. I don't know. Maybe I'm making that up. No, I think he just like know. flew planes in no. the movie. Like. Uh. He was like a like a American fighter pilot. Like there's like race car movies or like Driver. He wasn't a part of NASCAR, but he just drove cars oh, yeah, really fast. Like that. No, that was no, that wasn't it. Oh, Molly anyway, to me. let's see what she has to say during the post. Oh, okay. What part of this is starting the laundry? I didn't start the laundry, everybody. <laughs> I was gonna start it after the podcast, so when she watches this, she'll see that. We have so much laundry to do. Anyway, but. In any case, um, 
I don't even know what I was talking no, about. No, Tom Cruise. He, I, I don't think, no, I don't think he was no, in the like, Navy. Commercial, commercial pilots. Sometimes we're in the military before because they have that flight training. But what yeah. I was thinking about, you were talking about a, a pilot being tired, right? Like if you're a tired pilot. Yeah. I think about like driving down to Florida and how I get tired like in oh a my car. God. But there's like things around. Like you look around, there's still like lights on the road. There's still gas stations on the side. You're like, there are other cars. So you're like, oh, there's a car next to me. I can't fall asleep now. Right? Like your brain is telling you you have to stay up. Yep. Imagine you're in the air, like 30,000 miles in the air, and you're just flying straight. I don't even want to get anybody scared, but like this might have been one of the scariest videos I've seen on. Um, I think I saw it on Twitter oh, and my. like I'm going to fly again and I just – I don't even – I kind of don't even want to tell you just because like you'll yeah, fly no, again no. too. I don't want to hear it. I don't, honestly don't want to hear it because I don't even want to – It won't it. happen though because it was like some weird airline. Like it was some weird shit. But it, I mean it's just – it's like the ultimate like what you feel what, like not happen when you're on an airplane. Like it was just going down like – one of these like missing planes and it was like the last time they saw it, it was just on a free fall down. And I just like, was like that, that, that scares the shit of me. But like, if you have Tom Cruise and Top Gun as your pilot, like you well, think about like, like Sully when he uh, yeah. landed on the Hudson, Shout out to Sully. Fucking crazy. Um, we, I heard the, have you ever heard the, um, transmission from when, or whatever you call it? When <laughs> he, no, not the transmission. The uh, the transcript you, or yeah, like the like the, like the yeah the audio from like him doing it. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, audio. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to say. I think so. Um, he he was mad calm, right? Crazy. Yeah, it's like you're about to yeah. crash into the Hudson River. It, the, like you and he, and yeah. he was on the on the line with the air traffic controller, and the air traffic controller was like, "All right, we can get you to Teterboro or." Uh, LaGuardia's not that far, you know, just uh, tag on left and blah, blah, blah. And he was just like, no, uh, we're going to Hudson. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm sorry, say that again? Yeah. Like, going to Hudson. Yeah. He was telling that shit like he was landing on like a regular runway. Yeah, no, shout out to Sully. But the, I, I mean, I think I watched that whole movie. The fact that he even got like blowback from people and they try to like get at him of like, they said, well, they said he could have made it to Teterboro or whatever, and like to an apartment building. Yeah, yeah, but then they try to like went they went through the simulator, and showed like, hey, you had time to do this, but then they like argued in the case that like, with everything, all the other factors around of just like uh, I don't even know what the other factors were, but just like being in that situation compared to just being in a simulator saying you can do it, they like obviously said that he was good money and that like he wouldn't certain, be in any certain- trouble. Yeah, and at a certain point, you have to make a decision. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because like, if like, you don't decide, then you're just going to be in a lot more trouble. And then, like, common sense, too, has to come into play where it's kind of like, is everybody good? Yeah, everybody's good? Okay, you're good. Like, I guess they're probably – if he could have made it to the airport, maybe there's a penalty of, like, him not following protocols or something like that. But the fact that everybody was good and he landed a plane on some water should just be like – you're good, man. Like, have a nice day. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> the ends justify the means. Like, whatever happened, you're fine. You don't have to worry about anything. Yeah. I want to ask you, because while we're talking about airlines and airplanes, um, just looking at flight prices is crazy. Gas is crazy. You're kind of ahead of the curve a little bit. And, like, you're – some of these memes I see of, like, it will be like a person eating food, just mad delicious, chilling, and the memes like everyone with a Tesla right now. You have a Tesla, you have like the solar panels on your house, on the roof. You're kind of like ahead of the game of, you know, just electric and, you know, like solar power house and all that shit. How does it feel to be an electric car driver right now while all the memes and all the gas prices and all the shit going on with all that? I mean, is it any, do you feel special or like, do you, do you rub it in people's no, I mean, faces a little bit? Never that. I know. Like, I, I know. would never like rub anything in anyone's faces. But um, like, do you get looks while you're driving? Kind of like, fuck you, man. No, like, <laughs> not even. But at the same time, it's like elect electricity has gone up. 
like we've been getting emails from Con Ed because Con Ed's our electric provider. Yeah. But even with the solar panels, I'm paying four times more than I normally paid. Well, that's what I kind of wanted to talk to you about too because I, like, I was talking I to Holly about this. And we have friends. She told me they have just a couple solar panels on their house or some shit where they still have to pay. Yeah, you don't have to. Solar panels are expensive. Like you yeah. don't have to be one hundred percent. Like you don't have to produce one hundred percent of the electricity that you use. You could put on however many solar panels you want and just subsidize the amount of electricity that you're using from Con Ed. So you do so actually example, pay less on the electricity bill, but you're still paying for the solar panel. Like it feels like it doesn't add up to me. Well, that's well. I mean, at a certain point, if if it you know if you help your electric bill and those solar panels aren't as that expensive yeah then it works out i mean you'd have to do the the yeah. math on it but for me like i've I, since i got solar panels um i've never paid an electric bill i just paid my loan to the solar panels mm -hmm. which is a 12 year and just starting in like january of this year out of nowhere i'm paying like 300 dollars or two to three hundred dollars for electricity, and on top of my loan for the solar so, panel. So why is that now? Now it could be that it's winter. There's less sun. If it snows, my solar panels are covered. So there's less electricity that's being produced because it's not getting the sunlight. It could be that. But at the same time, there's also been like crazy increases in Con Ed. I forget what the reason is. Maybe because they're like shutting down power plants so there's not enough i don't know there's some shit that we're like i just feel like we're always getting got like that we don't we're not, not educated on it enough to like be like i don't know or it goes back to that issue where like customer service who can you complain to it's not like you can complain to con ed and they're like yeah well here's a breakdown of why it's more and even if they tell you that shit it's going to be something that you don't understand at all well con ed's been sending out emails like just so you know, we're not raising the prices on you. We're just – we're charging you exactly what we get charged when it comes to – it's like you have so much money. You're a monopoly. Yeah. Like don't don't tell me that like I'm just getting the fair – like I, like it's all – everyone's just paying their fair share. Yeah. So that's been tough. But I think um, as – because now there's more sunlight and I'm getting more – like credits with Con Ed because I'm still on the grid. I'm not off the grid. Yeah. I don't have a battery that stores the energy that I'm overproducing. Um, it goes back into the electric system. So if everybody had solar panels, it would help out Con Ed because then that produce like you produce a lot more than you actually use. Uh -huh. so, and then it pushes back into the grid. So some other house that needs electricity that doesn't have solar panels is using electricity that I produced with my solar panels. So then Con Ed gives me credits for that extra electricity that I produce and push back into the grid. That's how I get electricity at night, for example, for free. So does, does that Con make Ed, sense? No, it makes sense. But does Con Ed go out of business if every house in America puts solar panel on their roof? No, because they're still delivering the electricity to people's houses. I mean, they're... I just don't see a day ever where, like, everyone has everyone, solar panel. Yeah. No, it's I don't I think I don't know my buddy who owns the who owns the solar panel company mm -hmm. who owns the solar company that did my roof. Um, he was explaining it to me that like he thinks in in thirty years there'll be little microgrids where each little neighborhood will have enough solar energy to supply for itself, but you'll have to have storage. You know, you'll have to have like some battery storage area where all the people that are producing all that electricity that overproduction gets stored somewhere. I don't know. He was explaining it to me. I'm not smart enough to know how that shit works. Well, I'm just such a, I'm kind of like a, I don't know if pessimist is the right word, but like, or skeptic. Skeptic, pessimist. Yeah. Um, where I don't think any of these companies have us or anything that we do in our favor, you know? So Why? it's like at the end of the day, even like, that's these, a realist. Yeah. I don't think that's a, like a pessimist or, a skeptic because at the end of the day, if the company's not meeting their bottom line, if they're not making the profit that they expect to be making, then they're going to hit you with this like extra $300. Like we're just getting charged. Like, and that's the same shit with 
the water bill too. Like, how do I know how much water I use? And I, you know, like when they check your meter at the end of the month, I just, it sucks because it's like, you have to rely on these big companies and they'll never fail because it's like, you need water, you need power, you need all this other shit. But when you see it's, it's pretty frustrating. And again, I don't follow politics and all this, like these hearings too close and stuff like that. But like, when we pay all this money to our government and like taxes and all this shit and all these people sit up there and ask these like oil executives these questions of like how are you guys still making millions and billions of bonuses while like gas price and they legit can't answer the question or they'll like kind of laugh and then it's like it'll be yeah. a viral video and they'll be like shout out to Cong- congressman whatever for pressing this oil executive i'm like Fuck yeah. both of them because like it's not doing anything for any it's of us. It's theater, yeah. yeah. Theater. And they they're like, oh, but it's on the record. And they're like, who fucking cares? That guy goes back to his million dollar, multi million dollar job. Fucking everybody that is not like involved in the profit making of that company. Yep. And that congressman goes back to his district. He's like, I <laughs> questioned him. Did you see me? Did you see what I did? He gets his little viral video. Everyone's like, oh shit, he'll get voted back into office. So he's fulfilled his. His goal of just like I was a political science major and a Spanish major in college. Yeah. And the one thing I took away from my political science major is there's uh, like two goals in politics. One is getting into power and the other is staying in power. So like that's it. Like that's the only thing I took away from it because it was so true. Everything that you like these politicians that we studied did, it was all motivated by how do you stay in power? And anyone who wanted to do anything altruistic, like meaning – Doing something for the, just the sake of doing it because it's right, not because there's any agenda or self-interest in it. Those people, if they ever did it, would be voted out of office and they never heard. They never heard from again. Yeah, or Bernie like, Sanders people, or something like that. He's yeah, like the but, epitome but, of it, you know. Like, like he kind of made it far a little bit. But I think he's the exception because he's been yeah. singing the same tune for all these years, and he's done. He's like stayed true to his his word. But think about all these like people that are just like. Which way is the wind blowing today? Yeah. Like all these people that that were like, "Oh, Trump is going to ruin the Re- Republican Party," and then they were like, "Trump is the guy. He's my guy. I've been saying it all along." Yep. You know what I mean? Like nobody has a spine, and anybody who did talk against him, they only did it because they knew that they weren't going to run for office again. Yeah. So it's like, it's always proven true that pol- politicians will do anything to get into power, and do anything to stay in power. Yeah. No, I mean that's true, and and and. Even the old politicians like, you know, Biden and uh, Nancy Pelosi, it's like they were old years, like 20, 30 years ago. Like they're, and, and they're even older now. What makes you think they're going to change their mind on any new policies or like, I don't know, that whole situation? No, yeah, like, it's, it's just, yeah, no, I, <clears throat> I, it just it blows my mind to think that we're in a country of like 300 million people. <laughs> Or whatever it is, and this is the best that we have to offer. Yeah, we can't find some just like, and 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 then you watch podcasts with like Rogan or whoever, and there's these, there are these incredible people, these genius people that have, like, thought about so many things, right? Like, that really care about stuff. And then and you have just, like Kamala Harris giving like, she, I saw some clip oh, yesterday. Oh she was at like ah. a, she was at a library or somewhere, and she was like. It's probably the same clip that I saw. Yeah, she was like, it was like she kept using the same phrase like four different oh, times. She, it was like, yeah, she was like, it's the passage. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. It's the passage of time, because the passage of time is what it's all about. And but, you and go I'm through like, the years, and you get things done through the passage of time. And I like watched that, and I was just like, I don't know who it was. And it was just like when you're high and trying to give a presentation in class or something like that. But it's <laughs> like. It's embarrassing. It's like truly embarrassing. And it takes me back to like a funny movie uh, Will Ferrell did once like back in the day. It was like him and the guy from uh, Zach Galifianakis. And oh, yeah, yeah, where he was the politician. Yes. And he was like Trump before Trump. Like, but it was back in the day. Yeah. And I was like, damn, like when I watched it, I was like, this is kind of crazy. Like that, like he's not going to be kicking babies and doing weird shit like that. And then it came to life. So like that that is exactly like when I see these quotes and these sound bites from people, I'm like, 
there's no better person that can just give like an awesome quote that at least gets you like a little riled up or a little like jazzed yeah, about just, like where we're at. Oh, there's so many people that I watch on Rogan or something and I'm just kind of like, God, this guy could wait, why doesn't this guy fucking run for office and do yeah. some shit? But then everything gets <clears throat> corrupted when you start running for office because you need money to run. Yeah. In order to get money to run, you have to take money from people or corporations. And then you take money from those people and then now you like owe them something or you can't say something that you really feel anymore because that would undermine their business or whatever. And then they would take their money away and then you would lose. So that's the thing is like at the end of the day, as long if if there were just no money in politics, it, that's it. Everything is but that happens at every level, even at like the ice cream store. Like I'd be like there'd be mad people that come in. They get like eight cones. I'll give them like one of them free hoping I'm like, all right, that 350 that I just hit you off with, like, all right, bless me in the tip cup with that shit. You know, like, so, like, anybody who's listening has done a favor for someone, and unless you just have, like, the most golden heart of, like, you just did it out of the kindness of your heart, deep down in the back of your mind, you're hoping, like, I I hope I get some shit out of this or, like, something in return. So, like, think of that times a million on the, like, political level. So, it's like... It's done everywhere. It's just worse when it's a politician because it's like there's so much more at stake. Yeah. I mean, I just think that people forget why they're there. Yeah. You're supposed to be there to represent people, people like us. Yeah, and help people. And at the end of the day, they're just self-serving and it, nothing gets accomplished. It's just a mess. So, I don't know the whole thing. So I, I want to ask about the electric car because i feel like we'll get to a point oh, yeah. where gas it's already od it's kind of went down a little bit it was like four like 40 or something now it's down to like 419 420 which is still, Cali- it was like over six dollars in california yeah, someone showed like seven dollars in california or something like that like the big cities are just so next the, level the electric car is amazing mm-hmm. like the way everything about it the way it drives, you just charge it at home. You don't have to worry about it. I drove it down to Florida. Yeah. You stop superchargers, and just charge it up. It every like 250 miles. It's awesome, but I don't know how we're going to sustain all the battery production. Um, I think there's enough electricity. I don't know though. I think that would probably be an issue if like everybody oh. has your car. I don't know if we have like enough energy to like provide all that energy yeah. for the cars i don't know about that but at the end of the day like my other thing is i got my pickup truck yeah so that guzzles gas and um you know what i mean like it's it's good that we have the electric car but we should do a better job of only using that car you know yeah. what i mean but we i fill up the truck so infrequently that i'm just like whatever like it's fine, like uh, you know, like I mean, it's fine because I I can afford like to fill up my gas. But for someone that's like working crazy hours and they're like, yo, if I fill up my gas tank right now, I can't feed my family. Like that shit is crazy. <laughs> yeah, it is kind of crazy. I, like, I think, I think yeah, either my next or our next car, me and Molly will will be something electric, just because I think at that point maybe in three four years. There'll be more options for electric cars, but to your point, like, like, I didn't think about that. Like, there being enough electric to to make all those cars, or especially with the car problems we're having now, with like they don't have the chip and battery and stuff like that. I'm sure yeah. electric cars need a lot more of that type of shit. Yeah. I don't know what the fuck they need. Although once you drive an electric car, you're like, well, I would never buy a gas powered car again. That's how I feel. Yeah. Like I have the truck, which is a gas powered truck, but um. Like moving forward, I would never buy another gas powered vehicle. It's just, I don't know. Anyway, next thing I wanted to ask you, and I'll end ask, ask you, you know what I couldn't say yesterday? I couldn't say more, M- Maury Povich. M- <laughs> <laughs> Maury Povich. Maury, said- Maury Povich. Um, you could. I, 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 I like say- having, I'm having trouble pronouncing Maury. There it is, Maury. Maury. Maury Povich. What yeah. a banger of a show. Eddie- yeah, I know. We spoke. He's retiring. Yeah. And it's like yeah. he, he was so cool, calm, and collected, and he didn't try hard. You know, some of the other, like, talk show hosts tried hard. He was just 
had his shit and like just yeah, killed he it. made his whole career exploiting people with like fucked up problems. Yeah, but problems that like I feel like, like everyone Springer, needed to that, know that about. Shit was fake, but Jerry Springer was fake, right? Yeah. Maury would like ruin people's lives. Well, yeah, I mean, like Maury's fame is based off of like getting people that are, and it, it's like there was it didn't discriminate. Like it was just anyone basically that was poor yeah. from our country would go on that show and air out their dirty laundry and the whole um, "you are not the father." Like that's great television yeah but there's a fucking kid out there that's like looking at that 10 years later like damn that's my dad yeah yeah <laughs> like, that's not my dad or like i saw i will always say that like whenever i was having a rough parenting day i just throw on an episode of maury and be like i'm all right yeah I, i'm doing okay but then i would think to myself like damn they'd be like look at that and they would always do the same thing on maury right they would always do the same shit where um the woman would be like that's your baby. That's your baby. Look at look at his eyes. Look at his eyebrows. Sure, look nothing like him. Or look like at the him. top of his ear. Right, but, but whatever the case, they would always like go to the TV screen. And they would point it out, and they'd be like, "Look at look at that. Look at that. See how and it's the same." And then and then after that, the guy'd be like, "Nah, nah, nah." And then the guy would like diss the baby. He'd be like, "That ugly baby ain't my baby." And then he'd be the father. It's disgusting. Like look at that baby's nose. Look at that baby's eyes. Like that baby's terrible looking. Yeah. And it'd be like, Maury would be like, you are the father. Yeah. And it'd be like, the woman would chase the guy through the grip backstage and everything like that. And meanwhile, this kid is going to grow up. I know. And be like, damn, my dad was on national television. Talking shit. And, and Maury was, and like, now they're celebrating Maury. Like, he's like, great career, 30 years. Of I just- mean, it's not him. It's not him in those situations. Like, he was the one just presenting the news. Like, they needed to know if they yeah, were the father or not. Television. He would... He would provide gifts to the people yeah. to get them to go to Connecticut. Because remember, it was in Stanford, Connecticut? Yeah. And they would go to Stanford, Connecticut. And the reason I know that is because I went to um, the Stanford Mall where they have like it's a right bunch of restaurants. It's right across the street, right? It's right across the street. Mm-hmm. And I forgot how I got into the conversation with one of the bartenders. And I th- and she was like, Oh, we get the people from the Maury show and the Jerry Springer show all the time. Oh, no, she said Maury, just Maury. She said, we get the people from the Maury show over here all the time. Because they give they don't give them cash. They give them... Um, like food vouchers or something? Like gift cards. And so they go to like whatever. Yeah, the mall right there. there. Like the Capitol Grill. Like, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're like, yeah. They come over here and... Yeah, that's and, wild. Disasters, disasters of people. So these people are like, whatever, fuck it. Like, these are the same problems we're gonna have at home. Let's just go on TV and get some gift cards. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Like that's fucked up. Yeah, it's messed up. But also, um, I guess that, yeah, they're they're adults. They're making a decision. Yeah, they're getting TV time. So, like, like there's, there's kids involved. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah like if now they. Like, you... If it's the cheating episodes and it's just like you took a lie detector test and that and we determined that was a lie, then that's like okay, you, you're two adults. You're making a decision, a bad one at that. Yeah. But it's your decision, you can do that. But when you got like a little kid, and they're like, in the case of like five month old, whatever, or like two year old, like I've got a two year old daughter who like is like just wants to have fun, smiling. Like they'd be backstage with nobody sitting around them, and just yeah. the cameraman probably like zoomed in right on their face. <laughs> yeah. And they're like. Their parents are out there wilding about them, and they're just like, "Yeah, I'm just, I'm just here chilling." Yeah, that's that's why like, it's entertaining as hell. Like, that's probably the best. I feel like that show would just like excel right now, though. Like, don't leave now because now you have all like the Trump supporters and people who are like, would dial it up a little bit more, but they'd probably be a little too. I'm not a Trump supporter, and and that show was gold to me. I don't know. Yeah, that was a banger. It's just it it hit all audiences yeah. like everybody would want to watch it. Yeah, shout out, congrats on your phenomenal career. But I don't even think there's any OGs left like that. I mean, like Judge Judy's still there. She's like trying to like make. But I a, think she has a different show now on like uh, Discovery. Yeah, Plus. it's like it's not on the main shit anymore, and then it's just like yeah. weird. I think Steve Harvey tried to become a judge. Now he might have a judge judge show. Oh, you know who probably still has a show was the St- Steve Wilkos. Remember, you think um, he still has his show? I thought his show was done. Really, was it? Is Dr. Phil still on? Dr. Phil's still on. Um, 
but like he's not an OG OG. Like I know, yeah, because he wasn't on when like we were we would stay home from school. Yeah, like OG would be like if like if like Ricky was Lake was still on or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Like Sarah Jenny Jones, uh, Sarah Jesse Sarah, Raphael. I remember, yeah, I remember when mom used to watch that. There was yeah, I mean like though like Rosie O'Donnell. <laughs> Rosie <laughs> O'Donnell had her shit. Well, she was on the View for a bit. I yeah. guess some of the the OG people are like are on the View. Jerry Springer is definitely an OG. Um, I don't even know. Like the Price is Right is still there as a show, which is just an OG show. But Drew Carey like just never picked up the same torch that Bob Barker did. No, I think he just kind of dials it in. Like sometimes I watch him and he's just like, and that's a four. Yeah, like he just shows no emotion. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there was nothing on Channel Four that really had any like. I don't know. I, I honestly couldn't even tell you. <clears throat> I think now, a lot of those judge shows. There's like a thousand judge shows. It's like Divorce Court. Uh, ju- uh, Mathis is still there. Oh, Mathis is kind of an OG with it. He was like right, he, he's yeah, still he's there. from the way back, and he might have actually probably was like a real judge. And no, like, they all are real judges. Not They're Steve not Harvey. Judges. Oh no! If Steve Harvey has a has a judge, show, yeah, that's... Steve Harvey has a judge show now. I'm like, oh wow, eighty seven percent sure that Steve Harvey has a judge show now. But like, Millions probably real ju- real judge. Judge yeah. Judy probably got her shit in like 1914 before there was probably like a bar exam. So like, and then Mathis is an OG. No, but Judge Judy's actually pretty good though. When she she's very like, uh, I mean, I don't know what the hell am I talking Savvy? about? <laughs> I'm a Spanish teacher. I don't know. She probably. I just. She seems like very uh, to the it? point. Yeah, she doesn't. Yeah, she cuts off all the There's fat. No bullshit. She, yeah, yeah, yeah she's no right. bullshit. Million was like that back in her day too. She was like she didn't have any. She was good. Dad loved her. Yeah, I went to one of her shows, and oh, it was. Right. It's hard for those TV shows to fill their audiences now. When I was in LA, a whole crew of people that are with went to the Doctor Oz show. Not Doctor Oz. They went to Doctor Phil. And they said that, like, they would just have random staff workers sitting in the audience. They would have, like, yeah. just random people. Like, like I think they said, like, a homeless person was in this shit. Like, there's so many shows that have crowds that need uh-huh. to get filled. And it's, like, people work. And if you're going to a daytime show, if you're going to a daytime show, it's going to be some banger. Like, Ellen or some shit where you're going to, like, get something. You're not yeah. going to a Dr. Oz to sit in the audience on a Thursday at one in the afternoon because if you are you probably don't have much going on in your life yeah not only that but sometimes a lot of those shows they film multiple episodes and they need the 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 people to stay yeah yeah that's true yeah yeah um for like so what happened was i went to america's got talent back in the day yeah i went to that one too and it was at i want to say it was at music right city yeah yeah and it was at night but i went and they tell you right from the start this was like kind of pre-cell phone people abusing cell phones. They were like, you have to turn it off, but it weren't, it wasn't crazy yet. And I remember them saying, like, this is a four-hour show. So you I don't can't. I think they told us when we went, and it was like, yeah, four or six hours. Oh. Like, you can't leave. There's an intermission at like the two-hour mark or something like that. You can like go to the bathroom, but you can't leave. Like you have to be here for the entire time. And if you don't want to do that, then leave now. Oof. And I was like, damn. Like, because they because they have to fill the so they do multiple shows in one yeah, city. Yeah, yeah. I got, I got a gift card out of it, though, because I remember them, the guy, like the hype man that comes out at first, like the warm-up guy, mm-hmm. he was saying, we need people to be animated. We want to get you on camera. We want to show that the audience is into this. So if you see an act that you like, get up. Get into it. And if you don't like it, then you boo them. Tell them that they stink. Get them off the stage. You know, he was like yeah, super. Yeah, yeah. And like the first – people that came out were like break dancing or something and i remember i got up and i just started like he's like sir sir not not right now not not i didn't mean it but i was the only person in the entire radio city that was doing anything Uh i people were gonna listen to the guy yeah so people were gonna do the same thing that i was doing were they killing it or were you just trying to be on some like like they were good oh okay also just following instructions (laughs) (laughs) Oh, we have to get up and dance as well. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
it. Let's do it. And then I got up and I was doing it for a second, looking around, and nobody was doing anything. So I immediately sat back down. Uh huh. And after that, that crew got off the stage, the warm up guy came back on and he said, Where was that guy that just started dancing? And I was like, Oh, I'm in fucking trouble. <laughs> Get the I was thinking about fuck out of here. <laughs> That's what he was going to say. Because he called me out in front of the entire Radio City. Yeah. And then, and then um, this is back in the day. I was like on a date with a girl or something. And she was doing this. Like, this uh-huh. guy, this guy. And she's trying to snitch on you. <laughs> she did snitch on me. Oh. And so he said, stand up, stand up. And I was just, you know, I was like, oh, God. <laughs> So I stood up and he's like, I got a gift card for you because you were the only person to actually get into it Damn, and start dancing. So I was like, oh, that that was a good turn of events. Yeah. So no, that, that's a good feel. I feel like, I don't know if it's our faces, but I feel like whenever I was at, I think it was, Di- which one has the um, Indiana Jones? Is that Universal or Disney? Probably Universal because I don't even remember going to Disney. Yeah, we were... It might have been Disney because I was with Molly and like her family and stuff. Uh, well, yeah, whatever. Was... They they have like yeah. the Indiana Jones live show and the crowd is like actually kind of like popular. And they did the same thing like, hey, like raise your hand if you want to be on stage. And like I kind of made eye contact with the guy and he called me on stage and I did the shit. I just feel like our faces are like – I don't know if they're memorable faces or like <laughs> something that always gets like chosen. Uh... Uh, just wanted to give a shout out to our faces. I feel like I've spoken to people and they're like, I usually don't remember people, but your face, I remember. Like, I feel like our faces are one of those where like when someone says like, you have a face. I wonder if it's, if it's those people or if it's our faces, because I think it's our faces. Um, yesterday I walked down into, into, into downtown, into the city over here. Yeah. And, um, one, of my ex-girlfriends from when I was like a teenager, mm-hmm. her dad saw me outside of Starbucks. Wow. And I'm, yeah, and he like, he was wearing a mask and I saw his eyes and I kind of thought to myself that he looked familiar just from the eyes. Yep. And then he looked at me and then he went inside and then he came back out and he was like, Jed? And I was just like, yeah. And I had to like put it all together really quick. But I don't know, I just feel like... um yeah, maybe there's something about our faces that people remember. I don't yeah. know. There, there was a kid when I was young. His name was Ryan, who was like my best friend. And I randomly always think like if I ever saw him again, I would have no idea who he was because like his face wasn't memorable. And I don't know. I just think about Ryan sometimes because he was a good friend of mine. But then there's other people that have like a memorable – like there's that saying where it's like you have like a punchable face. So like you gotta have a memorable face. Like there's gotta be different categories of faces that people remember. That like there's just some faces of politicians like Ted Cruz. It's just like you just want to punch his face. Oh my god, yeah, that his. They yeah. should make punching. You know those uh, martial art, martial arts um, like dummies. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you know they should put his face on that, just because it would be such a great target. That would be a good one. I saw – do you remember Stretch Armstrong? Of course, yeah. They have Stretch Armstrong toys again in the toy aisle. Oh, uh, yeah. They're going to always recycle. No, but that was one that I kind of was like – I was surprised to see that one because the toy company realized that that was a banger to come back out with it. Because that was one that was like – I remember that like very – I don't remember a lot of toys from when I was a kid. But Stretch Armstrong was one that like stuck with me. That I remember, remember even like going back to memories of playing at Randy's house and like playing with a Stretch Armstrong. Like that toy was I, I was like debating buying that Stretch Armstrong. But do you remember it breaking and it was like this gooey? Nasty I don't remember it breaking. I remember just like toxic. I never remembered it. Bro- it broke. What? Yeah, well, after a while, you stretch it so much that it, like, the skin started to break, and then it was just whatever that gooey stuff on the inside started coming out. I feel like that happened with those like. 25 cent 50 cent toy machines like those little like gag things that you would throw against the wall like those would always rip and break you know what i'm talking about on those i was i'm definitely talking about stretch Stretch Armstrong. Armstrong definitely broke too 100 percent. damn his arm broke well that sucks yeah (laughs) 
But no, but it's Shet Armstrong. Sure, sure he lasted for a while. Yeah. Shout out to Shet Armstrong, but fuck Toys R Us because it's like they just went bankrupt, and now it's like I saw they're going to be back in Sears or JC Penny or something like that. So it's like, ooh, I got like a <laughs> like a, a <laughs> um, wheeze, a wheeze. Um, like they're, they're too big to to fail any of these big companies. So like. Yeah, but I don't. I don't think that's necessarily it. I think what happens is um, they found a people, new model or something. No, people. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? They, they bargain hunt for companies that go under. Oh, okay. And they try to re. They acquire the companies and then they rebrand and they do it not brick and mortar anymore. They, I think they. Uh, yeah, Toys R Us is going to be like online, like at, do everything online. So this way, there's no. Um, you don't have to pay rent for like warehouse space and your whole model is either direct to consumer where you buy you produce some shit in china yeah and and it sends straight to the consumer or you just spend money on warehouses where you hold it for a specific amount of time and then everything ships from the warehouses you know but it's it's tough like i was in target the other day and there's just fucking toys everywhere Mad toys. I remember that feeling when we were going to Toys R Us if we were a kid. Remember that Toys R Us like near the IKEA in yeah. New Jersey? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, like it's still right. the Toys R Us colors when you drive past that shit. Yeah, it's like right off of the New Jersey Turnpike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember going there as a kid, and I was just like, "This is heaven." There was also it's a Toys R Us in White Plains though, where they like tore down that whole apartment complex and like, or yeah. now they're building apart. But that was like the OG Toys R Us that we used to go to. Right, but that's what I'm saying. But back in the day, that was where you got your toys. Yeah. And then you went to the supermarket to get your food. And then you – so now they have the, all the big box stores. Yeah. And all of these stores just have it all. Yeah. So you go there. You can grocery shop, buy toys, and then underwear, and then pharmacy items. It's literally anything you could ever need. And the specialized stores are just like, oh, we can't compete with this shit anymore. So I'm like so technically not savvy that I – I went into the one of those Amazon Go stores once when I was at work with coworkers who like had the shit and was amazed that you could just pick stuff up and just walk out because Because it just it it scans it your It goes to your account, but I didn't scan my thing. I just walked in with someone else and they're like, "Yeah, it goes on their their shit." And I was like, "That doesn't seem to make sense." But supposedly they, there's a lot smarter people that figure that shit out before before we did but that's gonna soon be the case at a lot of places like they'll like Foot Locker will start doing that shit yeah I guess I don't know I don't know I'm just yeah, no, there's, the there's a lot of shit that's I just think about how much technology like I think about grandparents that have seen zero technology go to what where we're at now yeah just the amount of technology boom from you know, I don't know, 50 years ago to now is out of control. So wow. I'm just, I don't know, like, is it going to be that much more advancement from 50 years from now? Well, or is it going to be just what we have now? It's like, no, nah, there'll I, be some new shit. There'll be some next level shit. Like, but like there's shit that people do that I'm like, I just hope that never catches on. Like when people put on the uh, virtual reality stuff and like yeah. they're, you know, doing that, all that stuff to me is like, it's not real life. And it's just, it doesn't advance anything. Like, you know, like newer technology in the 60s and 70s would help evolve economies and like help timelines of driving and make shit better. All the stuff now happening is virtual or NFT and it's nothing that is like providing value to our actual like earth we're living on. Like there's no benefit to anybody else if you buy some NFT shit. Well, th- there's an argument there because there's benefits to artists. Because back in the day, if you were an artist, like you had to bring your shit to like a flea market, and someone would be like, "I'll give you a nickel for that." Yeah, but like, we've no, had so much fun at flea markets. Like flea markets are the shit. I was going to go that's and stink. That, yeah, but that's just an example. What I'm saying I is, know. someone could argue that there's benefit in it for people who didn't have the exposure back in the day. I guess that would be one. Yeah, for like art, for yeah, maybe for a for graphic art, artist. Yeah, but, yeah, or or any type of artist, like I don't know. But like an artist but, who does some real art shit is not doing some computer art shit. No, but what people are doing now is they're selling the NFT and then they're selling the physical thing with it. Oh, they are. 
Well, yeah, they yeah. probably figured out that no one's buying it. That's what I was going to ask you is like because you're techy and like you like keep up with trends of what's happening technology wise or whatever. You like you're interested in stocks. Are you interested in NFTs at all, or like the whole like? Not NFTs. I know there's a lot of opportunity in NFTs, but it's just not for like I just. The people who get into NFTs, I don't know how they have money to do that shit, but sometimes I look at some of these NFTs that are the ones that actually will gain value, and you have to spend thousands of dollars to acquire the NFT with the possibility of it maybe dipping low. I mean, the idea is that you hold on to it for an extended period of time, and it'll gain value, but that's for me, that's too much. Um, it's like not diversified enough. Oh yeah, like putting way too much into one thing. I don't know. I don't have enough money to like just go acquire different NFTs for thousands of dollars each. But um, I'm interested in the in crypto though. Yeah. Just be, just in the sense that it's just this. Uh, I know that people shit on crypto so hard, but I think there is definite value to it, and there's definite because people are assigning value to it. People think it's worth money, and it's you can trade it like with other people in yeah. a much more efficient way than the, than the way that the world works now. I do think that like Bitcoin, for example, mm-hmm. just because that's like the yeah the yeah the Michael Jordan or the Air Jordan that's the standard of crypto. Like I'm not I actually don't have any Bitcoin. I I have all like altcoins like other stuff. Mm-hmm. But um, I think that there is definitely a future for it, and sooner or later I think it'll become way more mainstream. And there's only a certain amount that is available. So, like, the more that people acquire, the more that's out of circulation and the more valuable it becomes. So Yeah, but who definitely- who decides how much is out there? Like, I feel like that's something that it's like when they release Air Jordans, they release 500 of them, but they really could make 1,500. Well, there was a set amount when it was, like, created that was created. So yeah, but, it's like, but it's fake, so someone could just create more of it. No, that's the thing is it's – someone can't just create it. It's – the way that it works, and again, this is some like complicated ass shit, yeah. is that like basically there's no central bank. There's not like one bank that says, well, let's just print more money. It's it's verified in a way that you can't fake a Bitcoin. Like it has yeah. to be verified by many different like entities throughout the world. So it's basically like it's kind of – it's it's a genius thing, but there's this ex, there's this like certain amount that's available, and then that's it. So, yeah, I don't know. I feel like it, like I don't know. Um, about, people talk about like crypto being a Ponzi scheme. I think a lot of that comes from the fact that anybody can create a coin. You just have to have like four hundred dollars or maybe even less. I don't know, and you can create a coin like on the Ethereum network, which is like just the the platform, and then you could call it like the the corn chips coin mm-hmm. and then if you have enough like influencers saying corn chip coin is about to go to the moon like it's crazy everybody's getting in on it and then you have everybody like on crypto youtube that sees that and then they start saying oh shit i should buy this like now and then everyone starts doing that and it pumps the price but then those people that were originally the ones that were like this is a bullshit coin like mm-hmm. i'm just gonna sell this shit as soon as it pumps then they sell it, and then those people that bought in at higher prices, thinking that they were going to make money, they just lose all their money. And then, and then when it, when the price dips, then they sell their shit because they're like, "Oh fuck, I don't want to like lose all my money, so let me just sell it now to make some of it back." So like, people who say it's a Ponzi scheme, there is a Ponzi element to those like fringe coins that really. Yeah, yeah. But but besides that, I mean, like Bitcoin's legit. Um, El Salvador uses Bitcoin as legal tender now. Like, I think other countries are kind of like playing with that idea. So it's it, like, doesn't um, OBJ make his salary in Bitcoin? Yeah, that's what they or Yeah, him and Spencer Dinwiddie. I, I don't. I mean, maybe I believe it. I don't know. Tom Brady paid the guy who gave him his football back. He gave him some Bitcoin or some shit. Or I just uh, if someone. But you could also that to me, it. I'd be like, yeah, just give me money. It. Well, you could also get it like a lottery ticket. Like your $1 that <laughs> someone gives you right now is worth $1 20 years from now. Yeah. Right? But Bitcoin – and people could say, oh, but it's worth less. 
But it's like a lottery ticket in the same sense that someone gives you a Bitcoin and it's worth $40,000 today. One Bitcoin is worth $40,000, yeah. right? Maybe 10 years from now, it's worth $100,000. Yeah, they just need to bring back the OG like savings bonds that like you didn't know about. And then when you turned like 20, you can still get a savings bond? You can still do that shit, yeah. Oh, those were like... When mom told me that they had savings bonds for us, it was like those like, like yeah. long big checks that yeah, they printed like, like turn, back in 1988. And they're like, your fifty dollar bond is now worth actually fifty dollars. No, that shit was worth. I feel like it, it had some interest on it. Yeah, it did. But what I'm saying is, like, when it matures, it's worth the amount. So you bought it at twenty dollars, and then it's worth fifty dollars in. Like oh, it 30. maxed out. Like, yeah, 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 like, you know what I mean? So it's not like a great investment. It's yeah. a safe investment, but. You know, at the yeah. same time, you know, it's like, I don't know. I feel like you got to gamble a little bit in in, a, in a smart ways to see if you, I mean, like, here's the other thing. If your money's just sitting in a savings account, then it's doing nothing. The bank is making, is using your money. Yeah. So they're giving you some bullshit return. You're not making any money off of the money that you have there. Yeah. So you might as well invest it. You know? True. Yeah. I don't know. Not for me. I'm not smart enough for that shit. I know. Well, it's like we're a uh, minute, seven. I mean, a minute, an hour and seventeen minutes in. Yeah, I'm about to go to bed. I got jujitsu, bright and early in the morning, before work. Yeah, that's one we spoke about. If you're a morning person or if you're a night person, I feel like you're you're a big morning person. No, but I'm not even. I'm like I force myself to be a morning person because that's the only time I can get shit done. That for for me personally. So if I don't do shit in the morning, yeah. You know, and I always thank myself later. Like once I've finished jujitsu, after having been up like early and you feel a like, lot better, just like getting myself going, and then I like go out there, get beat up, beat someone up. Like at the end of the day, I'm like, yo, I'm so glad I did that. Yeah, but it sucks getting out of bed. I know. Like, getting out of bed at five fifteen in the morning when you're like, fuck. But like once you just like get it moving, it's all right. All right, love you. I- this we'll do this later i love you too all right i'll talk to you later yeah so can you discuss whether or not there's a new kyle corn coming out or no yeah there's new ones on kyle drops them on sunday now so so there's new uh kyle corn coming out on sunday on sunday there'll be a new shit right like locked and loaded yo so if anyone made it this far into the video what they should do also is comment on this video for shit that you want to hear or maybe potentially get back to Kyle because you have a lot better chance of it getting back through this podcast than you do through Kyle's podcast because when there's like a thousand comments on that shit probably not many people are reading it or if they are it's not people send me shit and they're like yo tell Kyle I'm like I'm not I'm not doing anything like even if it was like tell Kyle I got a briefcase of money for him. All he needs to do is just pick that shit up at like the corner of this and this. No one will be there. I wouldn't tell him that shit. <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. So I, I like this for me is kind of fun. This is like uh, it's like a new thing. It's kind of fun. So if someone like comments some shit, I, I'll see it. Yeah, Chad will see it and he'll but tell more us. More than like see it, and then uh, and I'll just because because you and I are gonna do this every week, so. Uh, you know, it's something that we could bring up or you could bring up later or whatever. Drop a like is hot. All right. Bobby, I'll talk to you later. All right. Peace.